They look like Christmas presents. They are Christmas presents. <laughs> it's been awesome. What? This is camping. Oh my word. So we are officially stranded on Cedar Island. Oh my gosh. So you can see the, the creeper in the corner up here. No ferries today. They haven't made the call about the 4:30 ferry yet. So around so noon time, they're going to make that call. So we have another hour before we find out if we're leaving today or if we have to stand on it. The campground has got plenty of space, and I've already talked to the campground. They've been super nice. They gave us a late checkout today so that we could stay and wait for this ferry, and if not, we'll just book another night. Yeah. Well, let's go home. I think this calls for some cappuccino cappuccino on this nice okay. cool windy day i don't know if you guys noticed the uh the cow patties <laughs> but everywhere everywhere the cows just kind of roam around this campground i'm not actually sure where they are now they're way out on the beach like oh. they go out onto the beach on the dunes oh okay we watched them go out this morning but yeah i was trying to help Corey back in and i tripped and looked down and there's like a giant cow patty so, um, yeah, watch out for that. But there's stables here. You can actually go riding out on the beach with Outer Banks riding in stables. So there's horses right across from us, and then there were cows literally, like, right as we were. Oh, yeah, they were night. moving as I was pulling in. <laughs> but uh, here it's we like are. Being on the ridge, there's just some, some ocean and some wind. So we'll update you at noon. Hello? Yes, it is. Excellent. And do you guys have any indication about what, what the weather's looking like for tomorrow? Can we move to like Friday right now and then maybe we can do a refund if that doesn't work? Yeah, so we, and we're staying at the campground, so we just have to keep extending until we can get over to Okokoke for all the rest of our reservations. All right, we will be here. We're, we're right next door. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much. Bye. Okay, so the ferry has been canceled today. It's completely full tomorrow, but they think most will be canceled tomorrow. So right now we're booked for Friday morning at 7.30. So we are officially stranded on Cedar Island. Oh my gosh. She's like, do you want me to just cancel that and refund you? And I'm like, well, we're staying at the campground, so we have no other options. We have to get to Ocracoke. Oh, you um, really can't say that word. Ocracoke. Ocracoke. What am I saying okay. wrong? <laughs> Okra Coke. Yes, there okay. you go. Okra Coke. I don't know why I can't say it right. But so, sorry here's the to thing. Everyone who lives here, I'm saying it wrong. Last time I was trying to get off of Okra Coke. Now I can't even get on to Okra Coke. <laughs> well, it's better than being in limbo for like Absolutely. Days. At least we know the deal and yeah. we can just hunker down and do school and work and We need uh, to spin this thing and get it out of the wind. Yeah. Okay. My, our main concern is the slide topper, right? The slide topper. That's the only concern we've ever had on the road, and it's the wind with the slide topper. That's it. Because we have to close the slide. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, All right. I took away my job, too. Uh, yeah, took, Lily was really upset about the slide well, it's topper. It's on there now. I mean, the holes are there. It's staying. I know. We don't want to take it off now. So. But you can hear it whipping. I mean, if you are, if you camp in spots where there's, a lot of tree droppings and stuff and you're older and you can't you like get up on, get the, roof up on the, the roof then i mean it's kind it of a must but sense. for us it was just one slide and now it's our it's our weakest link at this point yeah otherwise we're a fortress <laughs> it was pretty solid last night and the wind it, was it was but it it kept me up a little bit yeah it did all right love Maybe you too uh, go book right, a couple see. more nights at a campground since we're going to be here a couple more days, we're going to try to move the RV uh, out of the wind so that the slide topper isn't directly in the wind, just kind of ballooning up. I don't think anything's going to go wrong with it, but just in case, I mean, it sounds pretty horrific while you're in the RV. Okay, so that 
seems to have fixed the problem. The, the slide topper is not whipping as much as it was before. Um, it's moving a little bit, but that's not a big deal. I'll be much happier with that. So this was based on, you know, comfort because we didn't want to have to close the slide and I didn't want to break that. Uh, but if it was based on safety and there was a spot like you were getting way high winds, like 50 plus, 60 plus mile an hour winds, it would be about safety. And at that point, you might want to think about closing all your slides in. And if you can move, if you can get out of there, get out of there. But if you can't, nose into the wind. Just drive your truck and trailer directly into the wind so you're as streamlined as possible, you know, just like you're driving down the road at 70 miles an hour if you drive that fast, but whatever, it can handle it. This was more about comfort, but if you were in a safety concern with super high winds and you couldn't move, at least you get your nose into the wind. This but, is so much better, like on the inside. Yeah, you it's, can see the, the creeper in the corner up here. Hey guys. <laughs> it's just like way quieter. It's much house. more quiet. Now it's hard to get out of the RV because now the, the door is being blown directly closed. You gotta be careful, we're gonna get whacked by the door. But it's a gift and take here. It's, it's picking up. That was another reason why we moved because it was going to increase by 10 miles an hour. So we were like, do we want to sleep tonight? Or do we want to move in the middle of the night because it gets bad or no. just take care of it now? So do it now and success. Get settled because we're here for a couple days now. All right, there are new signs of life. I'm glad we ended up moving the RV yesterday because the wind was whipping. So it was much nicer in the RV. Uh, I wanted to add a couple other things. Obviously there's a ton of little details you can, you can add in about you know wind safety and stuff, but these are a couple things that have happened to us. Uh, and one is just, like we've mentioned before, checking apps. And if you see a storm coming your way and you happen to be parked someplace, you're on the move anyways, or it's really nasty, you can most likely just drive away from that storm, which we've done in the past and never saw any of the storm. And one more thing, if you happen to be in a spot where you just cannot move, um, I would advise you to try to get away from trees. Uh, trees can easily fall in your RV. That would definitely ruin your day. It could really be bad news, especially if it happened at night when everybody was inside. We don't want that. So stay away from trees in the wind. If you can get behind a building and have that be your windbreak. And there's no sense in driving in heavy, heavy winds if you feel that thing rocking. And that has happened to us before as well. I believe it was Iowa. We saw like what, we were like, oh, what's that construction? No, it was like a little mini tornado. We pulled off the road, got behind a mall, we ate lunch and that the wind subsided and we went on our way. Right now, we've got some new life. It feels like we're camping again. Uh, we're gonna do some grilling. So we're gonna do those ribs that I showed you. He's very excited about ribs I'm tonight. kind of really excited about the ribs. Very excited. So, there's a million different ways to cook ribs. I'm gonna do the three, two, one method. That's the one I've done before. That's what I've, I like. I've never cooked these before. What are these called again? Beef ribs. Beef ribs, okay. Never cooked them before, but I assume it's similar. So that's what we're gonna do. One thing I like to do is try to remove this membrane. It's not that hard to pull off. And that allows for the smoke to penetrate and the flavor to penetrate even deeper uh, without that membrane on there. One small step you can take, but I think it makes a big difference. Now the next step, I don't think anybody recommends, but I just do it. Uh, and that's simply to score in between the ribs. Maybe that kills the flavor, I don't know. But that's what I like to do. Let us know in the comments, how do you prepare your ribs? Yeah, how do you What's do your, your ribs? Process? Cause I know this is just the way I do it. There's 10 trillion different ways to do this. I always use mustard as a binder. Um, and that's just to kind of like hold all the rubs on and, and give you that nice crust as it's cooking. Do this for a butt. I do this for ribs. Seems to work. Like I said, there's a million it's ways. Good. And that's, that's the best part of barbecue. I'm you just simply gonna start with um, the blend. You've heard me talk about the blend all the time. Salt, pepper, garlic from Kinders. You can get it everywhere now. I'm just gonna start with this. I'll add some more specific flavorings, like say when I wrap it, again, I'll add more of that um, barbecue sauce and you know some more, maybe some more sweetness to it. 
But right now I'm just going to start with this. People write comments all the time and send messages asking Corey for recipes and there's no recipe. I so never have any recipes. <laughs> I just dump stuff on. I think if you have your cooking process down, the spices, I mean, they definitely matter, but they, they matter less than just getting your cooking process down. I'm just going to put these on for three hours. If you get a good crust and it looks the way you want it to, you know, you start to see these bones start to like kind of shrink down because your meat's doing what you want it to do. Maybe you can wrap it a little bit earlier, but that wrapping process I think is really the key to getting that super tender cut. So I'm excited because ribs are always good. I know these are going to be good, but I'm really excited, especially to taste this one right here. All right, now let's see if these even fit. It's a lot of meat. Look at this. We got tons of room. That looks awesome. Uh, I mean, it doesn't look awesome, but it's going to be awesome. It will. It looks kind of gross right there. Like my hands. There we go. Look at this grilling view. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, we're back into it. This is what I envisioned when we said we were going to the Outer Banks. Oh, yeah. Tomorrow, we're supposed to be getting on the ferry at 7.30. I'm excited, a little bit nervous. <laughs> I don't know. We've never put anything on the ferry before, so it's tomorrow. The RV becomes a boat. Day. We actually tried to make it a boat earlier in this adventure, but now it's actually going to be a boat. What a <laughs> what a crazy couple days! All right, so the sides, the sides that we're doing, we're doing corn of the cob in the Instapot. I'd rather not tie up the grill trying to do corn of the cob. I'd rather be finishing the meat. Jess can have her thing, so everybody's kind of working together. You Speaking of working sure together, yeah. so I see a lot of people spend their time shucking in the in the store, and I'd much rather spend my time outside doing it. You know, put, put a chair up and just look at this view instead of staring at a produce section. I have great memories of shucking <laughs> corn out on the deck, and uh, so the girls have picked that up. They're not kids anymore, but they still remember when they were kids. I still love shucking corn. So they're gonna shuck the corn, and along with corn of the cob. We're gonna do some baked potatoes. I'm holding my hands really awkward because it just, I feel, <laughs> We've gotta go kinda wash feel your hands. icky right now. Okay, inside so. you go. <laughs> RV on there. Oh, there's an RV on the ferry right now. Nice. <laughs> it's a really good sign. Okay, so I'm gonna make one quick amendment to the uh, corn husking in the store. You do wanna check every single corn you pick. You wanna just rip down one side to make sure all, nothing's rotted on the inside. So you do wanna check your corn. Just don't do the whole thing. Oh, it looks so good. No, it's so pretty. Corn means summer. Okay, so these have been on for about three hours and they're looking good. Oh my gosh, they're looking good. So it's time for stage two. I'm gonna start with the ribs. This one's gonna be the ribs. I have two layers, because this is gonna be the layered side down. So I just don't want any, we don't want any leakage. I'm just gonna use just a little bit of butter, probably three sticks of butter. I'm gonna do... Three chunks of butter, not three sticks, right? <laughs> three chunks of butter, three little, <laughs> yes. And then this is where, I mean, everything varies. It's what you like for flavor. So I'm just gonna put some sweet and smoky and then some apple cider vinegar so the idea of this is that they're just going to soak up all this goodness and just kind of like boil up into it so I just put one layer over the top of this and then I want to wrap it tight so I make all use of of all those juices. In case you didn't know, tinfoil is a must. Tinfoil is the greatest creation ever <laughs> for grilling. This is the three, two, one method. There's a million different ways. It is three hours to smoke, two hours wrapped like this, and then we'll finish it off, opening it up and, you know, kind of getting it crispy again for an hour or less. They look like Christmas presents. They are Christmas presents. <laughs>
at this point, don't really need to cook them a full hour since as soon as they look the way we want them to. Oh yeah. Oh. Gentle, gentle. Easy, easy. Look at that. That's, oh. it's ready to fall apart. We're doing good. So we just want to get this nice and crispy now. So you're leaving it open? I'm leaving it open. It's my timer. I'm doing it right. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to do the same thing to these, these beef ribs. And then we're going to put these baked potatoes on at the same time now. So we're going to crisp them up. I'll probably crank the heat. Oh my gosh. And then uh, let them rest while these potatoes cook. Okay, so this is after about 15 minutes. I think I'm going to cut it short. It looks pretty good. Oh my gosh. Look at this. Hold on. Look at this. We'll just do a little... Stock. Oh. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, there it is. Um, yes. I don't know. I, I mean, I'm really excited for this too, but holy cow. Like, look at this night we got. It's been awesome. What? This is camping. Oh my word. Is that falling apart too? Come on. <laughs> okay. Of course it is. Mm. Layla, come here. Look at that. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Falling apart. Oh my gosh. We're spoiling okay. our dinner. I know. <laughs> okay, so really quick, for corn on the cob in the Instant Pot, you put two cups of water in the bottom and put your trivet in, and then just set these on top because we only have four and we have the bigger Instant Pot. They fit fine. If you need to, you can trim the ends. And we're gonna set that on there, put the cover on, and you just put it on manual steam for two minutes, literally two minutes. So it's gonna get to pressure, cook for two minutes, and then release the pressure and you have perfect corn cob. Oh. Really? Only two minutes? Two minutes. Okay. Ooh. Ooh, steamy. That was really easy. Yeah, like so fast. But let's see if they taste good. They're gonna taste great. I'm not sure I can explain how excited <laughs> I am to eat this food. <laughs> That's a wrap. We gotta eat this stuff. Look how good this looks. Those are the coolest looking things ever. It looks like something out of like the Flintstones. I know. What do they get? A Brontosaurus Rex or <laughs> yes. like a Bronto whatever. Bronto ribs or whatever they get. Yeah. Good night. We'll see you in the morning. Bright and early. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. One thing that's kind of up for debate. Are you team eat the corn off the cob or cut the corn off the cob? Cutting the corn off the cob is total cheating. Yeah. Cut. No. Team you, cut. Yeah. No. Oh, you did it. I didn't even notice. <laughs> I yes. cut. That's, she's team cut with daddy and Layla I and I team, are hardcore. I'm team cut. Yeah. You get so much in your teeth if you don't cut it off. Yeah, but it's more fun it's to eat. It's part of the way. experience. Okay, so where are you? Are you uh, team cut or are you team eat off the cob? <laughs>